Welcome to Sewing with Threads, the monthly podcast by the staff of Threads Magazine. I'm your host, Editor Sarah McFarland, and I'm joined by Senior Technical Editor. Hi, I'm Carol Frazier. And our special guest this episode, Jennifer Stern Hazeman. Hi, how are you? Hi, Jennifer. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for being on Sewing with Threads. Uh, Jennifer is the owner and designer at J. Stern Designs. Her focus is drafting flattering patterns with easy to follow instructions and fitting techniques. Her featured patterns include classic jeans, a cup size fitted shirt, and a unique tee. And she's currently working on a new easy fit and sew knit collection. Jennifer shares sewing, serging, fitting, and construction techniques via her J. Stern Designs YouTube channel. She teaches for the Master Seamstress Program at the University of Rhode Island and has online classes at Craftsy.com and PatternReview.com. To start us off and to let everybody get to know you better, we have the five speedy sewing questions. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Jennifer, who taught you to sew? Um, My mom taught me to sew. She had her master's degree in home economics, so she started me pretty early. Where did she go to school? I think she got her master's at Penn State. She went to St. Joseph's to get her bachelor's degree. She met my dad at Penn State. So, But it was really, um, she'd give me scissors and, you know, needle and thread, and I would go in my room and just make stuff. Like from and a very, how old were you when she started Well, she that. likes to tell me when I was five, I tried to re- reproduce the cover of Good Housekeeping magazine. There was like an apron on the cover. And I guess mm. I made a pretty good rendition of it. I'm really kind of sad, though, because we can't find it. Like, I don't know what happened to it. But, um, yeah, so I think I started pretty early. I wanted to be mm. like my mom, I think. Yeah. yeah. What is your favorite sewing term? Um, seam ripper. And I think because um, I sew very fast and I own quite a few. Um, so that's really what pops in my head when you say to me, sewing term, seam ripper. Seam ripper. It's, it's fun to say, too. Yeah. I know. Not that many people will admit to it. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you currently sewing? I'm currently sewing jeans. Um, I'm working on a new class. So it's a jeans class. So I'm working on some jeans. I have a couple pairs started in various stages. What what kind of cuts do you like, or do you experiment with them all? Um, my favorite cut is boot cut. Um, so I decided to switch it up. I'm doing a straight a straight leg pair, and actually I'm wearing my ponty knit jeans. And the fun little story about that is I started them a long time ago, like two years ago. And then when I picked them up to finish, I thought, oh, I'll make these straight. And so I tapered them. But then I once I put them on, I realized I had already made them straight. So now I have skinny jeans. So, um, so I guess I have them all from boot cut to skinny. What's your favorite fabric to sew? My favorite fabric is whatever my current pattern calls for. So I love working with knits. I love a really nice denim, um, you know, and then I'll get novelty fabrics that, you know, I'll need to think of something special or different ways to treat them to get them to fit properly. So it really depends on, you know, what my current pattern is. And what do you love most about sewing? Well, that's an interesting question. I love sewing, but really for me, it's all about making the patterns. I love drafting patterns. I love coming up with the different shapes and styles. So, and then I love testing them and then making them. So, well, I think that segues right into what we wanted to talk about for the main portion of the episode. And that is fit, the importance of fit and why fit is so important to you in your pattern designs and why it's become something that you really focus on. Yes. um, I, well, teaching sewing is, you know, one of my favorite things. And so during a class that I was teaching a few years ago, I had a woman who was, we were working on fitted shirts and at the end of the class, she was in tears. And I first, I thought there was something wrong. So I, afterward I went up and I talked to her and she's like, she's like, you don't understand. She goes, this is the first time I've taken a class and I've ended with something that I could actually wear. And I, that just really touched me. And so I realized, you know, women struggle so much with their, you know, their confidence and their shapes and sizes. And it's just, I want to make everybody feel beautiful, you know, so I work with, you know, that's why I like working with the patterns. And what's most common fitting problem you come across? Well, I'm all about the pants and jeans right now. And the biggest fitting issue 
for pants and jeans is getting all that extra fabric off the back leg. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's been this mystifying um, topic for me for a while, but I think I'm finally starting to understand that because everybody's shape is different 3D, the crotch curve can't just be measured. You know, so when you measure your crotch shape and then you compare it to the pattern, a lot of other things come into play. So, you know, I'm discovering about, um, you know, your front thigh and how your whole body (laughs) is shaped and then putting the crotch curve in the right spot helps pick up that fabric. So it's really, it's really about smoothing the back leg. That's and interesting. I, I remember, it, now correct me, when you started working on a jeans pattern, which was quite a few years ago, yeah. I think, you were trying to sort of replicate an expensive pair of jeans that you had. Yes. And, and you, yes. the fit was really great and you wanted to sort of make that work. It, did that, is that something that you've proceeded with or did you end up having to sort of walk away from that because you didn't see how it fit everybody? Or? Well, back then mm-hmm. I was um, much more slender than I am now. So as I've gotten older, my body has sort of, um, I, don't, I don't know, morphed into a more mature shape. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's required me to reevaluate my patterns and make mm-hmm. them more generous not well, not generous, but just to be able to fit women in general. I'm, I almost feel kind of lucky that I'm changing shape because it's giving me options to, you know, I can try myself first and then my friends and my daughters. Um, but way back then, I, you know, I was just enamored with, you know, high end jeans and I wanted to, you know, replicate that. And, and that's part of the getting rid of the, the fabric in the back of the leg because that's yes. what that kind of good yes. look is, that really streamlined kind of yes. jeans look. And I I mean, I don't think that they fit me very well when I try to buy those kinds of jeans because yeah. I'm a little bit more curvy in the back, I think, than a lot of those will well, accommodate and, for. And Well, designers want you, you – designers, I don't know if they do it intentionally, but mm-hmm. they want people that are a certain shape to wear their clothes. So yeah. in ready-to-wear, they'll – limit size ranges or make mm-hmm. them fit a certain way so the only people who can fit into that can wear that. Um, and as a indie pattern designer, I really try to not make my patterns fit me specifically. Mm-hmm. I try to make them an average and then I practice fitting them onto me and so I can then learn to fit them onto everybody else. Mm-hmm. So... Do you have any strategies built into your patterns to help the sewer fit themselves? I, I include a lot of fitting information in the instructions, and I have a lot of extra information on the patterns. So I'll have length and shorten lines. I'll indicate, um, you know, different things that could help with fitting. For example, on my shirt um, pattern, I actually draw a box around the dart and explain how you can slide it up and down to get the 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 dart in the right position for you and mm-hmm. how to measure. So I try to just include a lot of fitting information. And illustrations. I do a lot of illustrations. Oh, those are very That's helpful. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And yeah. what size range are your patterns? What do you go for? Well, I was doing size 6 to size 24, but I recently have met a woman in my group. She's from Romania, and she's a zero. And she said to me, I can't buy your patterns because they're not small enough. So now I'm grading from zero to 24. And I'm lucky because I have her to help test these smaller sizes. So before I release them onto the world, we'll make sure that's perfected. Um, but I'm kind of excited because, um, you know, she's really excited to try the sizes and help me. So I'm expanding down a little. <laughs> that's not a bad thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I know that right now um, I think that the demographics of the United States are going more in the plus size direction. But I know a number of people who are really on the other end of the spectrum. And they're frustrated also yeah. because it, the clothes they get make them look overwhelmed. Everything is always too large or they look like I, I knew somebody who said, I always have to buy children's pants and they have the elastic waistband in the back. They just don't look good. And I felt I'm like I never really yeah. thought about what it would be like to be that far down in this in the size range. Well, in every hands-on class I teach, there's usually at least one lady I have mm-hmm. to grade down my smallest size. So mm-hmm. there is a need for it. And I, you know, I want to have a pattern for most everybody, you know, yeah. so I think, um, you know, I think going down to size zero will be good. And, you know, yeah. I'm excited. Why do you think it is that women have such an emotional reaction? Why do you think it is so emotional to have a good fit? Uh, 
Well, I think sewing to start out with is a very therapeutic activity. I think women really get a lot out of sewing things for themselves. And if they're a garment sewer and they've been frustrated in the past and haven't been able to achieve garments that they really feel comfortable in, once they get there, I think it it's a big triumph for them. Um, and I also think that there's a lot of frustration with, you know, going shopping to buy clothes. So if you spend the day shopping and come home with nothing because you can't find things that fit, but you know you can sew them, you know, or you learn how to sew them, I, I just think it gives you the power to, you know, make things that you're, you love and you're comfortable in. It is a lot of frustration, the frustration of shopping, of sewing with a pattern that doesn't take into account real shape. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's, you know, and if you've spent a lot of money on fabric and you sew something up and it doesn't fit, that can be a little discouraging too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think it's, you know, I think it's really, I don't know. I just, it's amazing when you get that perfect garment and you've learned how to do it. I think that really is amazing. And I think I've seen it with women. Um, and some men. I've actually done some jeans classes with men, and they've been uh-huh. e- almost equally excited. So, <laughs> Jennifer, when did you start designing patterns? Um, in 2007. Um, and really, it was an offshoot. I was doing the Bernina Wearable Arts fashion shows, and I had a friend, Eric. He was helping me with my patterns because back then I didn't know how to do patterns. So he would make me a muslin of my design, and I would go to his um, house in New Jersey and he would help me get it started. Well, this one time I went and he showed me draping. And after he showed me draping, I didn't want to work on my Bernina garment. I wanted to drape us something. Um, and we had America Sews, um, not America Sews, um, whatever National Sewing Day is in September. And when I worked at the sewing store and he brought me a dress for him from New York. And so once I got my hands on that dress form, that's all I wanted to do. So I started draping and I did a line of skirts and then I started with jeans. Now, do you uh, do mostly draping now or do you draft? I I draft now. Um, I will sometimes drape something to see about adding fullness onto something or seeing how a dart is or if I want to add gathers, but really it's mostly um, drafting now. I wanted to ask you about those heady Bernina days back when you did those amazing oh. uh, competition things. How many years did you compete in that? I uh, think I did five of them. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yes, and it was a six months of, out of my life um, right. thing. Well, uh, actually, I did four there, but I also did the Faf dealer fashion show before that. Okay. And then they, I won twice in a row, and I started to get eyeballs from some of the other ladies that happens <laughs> so yeah. I to yeah. graduate from that and go to the next <laughs> one but um they were amazing you mm-hmm. know we would go to houston to the international quilt market and you know you would go to the fashion show and then after the fashion show you know everyone would just be you know talking to each other and all the designers would get together and you know and just compare i remember notes. one particular i think it was a, a beautiful cape Oh, with a Co- with a uh, thread painting, with... a black uh, yeah. dress with a oh, painting. That yeah. was all embroidery. That was yeah. a long yeah. coat. Yeah, yeah, that was the Oscar goes to. Ah, oh, okay. Yes. okay. I oh, went... I was going to ask. Were there themes? There were themes every year, weren't there for those contests? They, yeah, they were loosely. They yeah. would they would name the show right. and they would have yeah. a theme. Um, but the, that was the Oscar goes to, and I would I won viewer's choice for that garment, mm-hmm. and actually their whole the the show book and everything, all the colors were all designed around my garment. Oh, wow. Because it was on I the I think cover. we have a picture yeah. of it yeah. someplace. And if we don't, I'll get a picture and we'll put it in the show notes yeah. for this episode because oh. I remember seeing that. I, I really, I had such an amazing time working on those garments because um, it was a journey. I would start with, you know, mm-hmm. looking for ideas. Um, that garment actually was inspired by some toile um, wallpaper I saw in mm-hmm. a um, in a magazine ad. It was like black and white toile. And I got the idea of shapes, the shapes of the flowers and the toile for the shapes of the flowers and the embroidery. So 
really yeah. it was really show stopping. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a red oh. carpet. Yeah, and and those fashion shows were fantastic. I went to uh, probably three of them at least, yeah. maybe four, because we used to go to that that um, expo. Yeah, frequently. it was amazing. It was a really beautifully produced show, and everything oh. was just. I mean, everything was more amazing than the thing before when you. And I know. Came out onto and, the and when you looked at everybody incredible. else's too, like you're in your bubble making your own garment, but then when you go to the show and you get to see everybody else's, they're all amazing. I, I'm I'm grateful I never had to pick I know, among it, them because they yeah. were all a beautiful. And, and there amazing. was such an incredible variety. Exactly. Do you know, some people did a lot of embroidery, some people did piecing and patchwork yep. and quilting and all kinds of things. It was really amazing. And they went from like incredible showstoppers to what looked like, you know, like an elevated version of something you might wear. Exactly. I remember uh, Mary Ray, who has used to work for Threads, used to compete there sometimes. And her her style was a little bit more toned down, but really sophisticated and gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful yes. things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other uh, last summer, I think it was, I went to a used book sale that is held here in Newtown. And um, it's a huge book sale. And I always go to the sort of sewing and craft books. And I found two of those, uh, two of the the programs from mm-hmm. that Bernina show. Yeah. I don't know who donated them, but well, I opened them up and I saw some things by you and some from a couple of other other uh-huh. authors that we work with, Kayla Kennington and a few others. Yeah. It was oh, really, yeah. That was a nice trip down memory lane. They're fun to Incredible leaf through. I have work. them. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't know that they do those shows anymore, which is they kind don't. of a shame, but it's, it is a lot of work. I know that it takes, you know, really a year to get that stuff done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll have to bring those in, Carol. I would love to see those. I didn't buy them. I oh. was I was <laughs> on a book buying diet, and so I didn't buy them. I really wish I had, though. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, Jennifer, I wanted to ask you about, you have a new venture with another author that we love to work with, Gail Patrice Yellen. Mm-hmm. What are you and Gail doing together? Gail and I decided to team up and do something together because we're very good friends and we're on the phone every day consulting each other about our projects. So we decided to start Stitching Zen with Gail and Jen. And this is the perfect recipe because, as I said, I like to do the patterns and Gail loves to sew. And she loves to do serger techniques. And I think between the two of us, we have the full range of, you know, expertise. So um, we do a pattern every quarter and we will show you how to sew it, how to fit it, how to embellish it and how to hack it into something else. And so we've decided to put it on the teachable platform instead of just a Facebook group, because Mm -hmm. that way, you know, if you don't want to be on Facebook, you can still you know, take part in it, but we also added a Facebook group for people who like it. Okay. And, we, and the teachable mm-hmm. platform, is that a place where you can upload your own videos, your own teaching content? Yes. It's a, it's a platform designed for independent instructors who want to have a class, you know, similar to a craftsy or a pattern review. It's mm-hmm. just, it's, you just can sign up and start your own account and then you can, you can teach a class. So really you could go on there and, and make an account and teach a class. Like anybody could. So I kind of like that because, you know, it gives people a forum to. It's very accessible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and they can share what they know and they, mm-hmm. you know, and they can do it on their own time frame and, you know, they can produce it any way they want, which I think is kind of cool. So, you know, so we do all video lessons and then we live stream every week in our Facebook group. And this is going to be ongoing as you yep. release new patterns. Yep. So April 1st, the, the next pattern will come out and it's going to be the Zen Tunic. And so are these downloadable, the patterns? The, all the patterns are downloadable mm-hmm. and they're free for members. So once okay. you just become a member, everything we do is free. Mm-hmm. And we actually found um, cantha cloth quilts at o- Ocean State Job Lot. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Gail made a cantha jacket and I made a cantha um, weekender bag. And so I made a pattern with the full instructions, and that's a free bonus then for members. So, you know, we'll be adding extra things and Mm -hmm. doing fun extra projects, and we'll be doing more live events too. So it's exciting. Uh, What kind of patterns are you using? You mentioned a tunic for this round. Yep. We we started with the Zen jacket. Mm -hmm. Zen tunic will be April. April 1st. Mm -hmm. Then we have some Zen leggings Mm -hmm. and um, a sleeveless top that sort of has a yoke around the neck. We're calling it the halo top and it has gathers in the front. Um, And then we have a skirt. So is the idea that it will become maybe a wardrobe over time? Yes. We're going to, as the year goes on, we will then start combining them into outfits and um, 
at the end of the year, and actually this is the first anyone's heard of this, um, we're going to do a lookbook. So the lookbook will be a free digital book for members, but then we'll also have it to bring when we do live events. So every year there'll be a, a lookbook of all of our techniques and projects and stuff. That's oh, fun. fun. And are, they, yeah. are these focused on knits, did you say, or is it... No, knits, knits and, woven? and wovens. That's right, because the jacket would yep. be... I think yeah. the skirt will be a, a woven skirt, mm -hmm. non-stretch. Um, and actually, the skirt is going to be a pattern from my earlier days when I draped those first set of skirts. Ah, <laughs> so okay. I'm, I'm, you know, redoing the pattern and, you know, obviously improving it from when I started, but I'm kind of excited about that skirt, so... Fun. Yeah. Okay, since you're a jeans expert, I did want to ask you a little bit about um, how you feel about stretch denim versus non-stretch denim. And now you're doing a ponte knit jean too. So what do you, what are the benefits of each of those or uh, not benefits? <laughs> well, I don't know if there's a benefit one or the other. I think when you get a great fitting pattern, mm -hmm. non-stretch is amazing. Mm -hmm. I like the way it's, it stays the same shape all day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess that is a benefit. Um, but also stretch gives you the benefit of being a little bit more comfortable. And it's also mm -hmm. a little bit more forgiving if you don't have the perfect, perfect, you know, pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And I find that when you make jeans, you, you make your first pattern, you wear your first pair of jeans, and then you're like, oh, maybe I should fine tune this or tweak that, mm -hmm. you know, for yeah. your second pair. Um, and then Ponte Knit is, I think, the best of both worlds because it's very, very forgiving, very mm -hmm. comfortable. And, you know, if you get a nice ponte knit, it holds up pretty, you know, it, I oh, don't yeah. notice like that they fall out of shape so much. No. And, and I think it's a little more versatile for, for yeah. work and oh, yeah, yeah. more professional situations. Yeah. It's almost like having a fancy pair of leggings, you yeah. know, because they're tailored and they look nice, but they feel like you're wearing leggings, Yeah, the ponte knit. That's how I feel about that. Well, we're nearing the end of our time, so we're going to take a little break, and then we'll come back with a reader's question. April is National Serger Month. Join the celebration at your local Baby Lock retailer with a special Sip and Surge event. Grab your friends and your favorite beverages and make a handy microwave bowl cozy. Bring your own soda, tea, or other drink, and your retailer will provide you with everything else you need, including the serger, fabric, instructions, and more. What are you waiting for? Find a participating retailer and get more information at babylock.com backslash NSM. Okay, we're back. All right, it's time for Q&A. Jennifer, we're looking to you to help us out with this one. This is a question that we got via email. Um, I found princess seams are great for fitting, and I look for patterns with them. I can achieve a fit I'm happy with. However, my question is, where should the princess seams sit in relation to the bust point? I've heard just in sewing chatter that it can depend on your figure type or style preference, but I really want to get it right. Um, I think for the princess seam, now there's two different kinds of princess seams. There's mm -hmm. the princess seam that goes into the armhole, mm -hmm. and then there's the princess seam that goes from the shoulder to the hem. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're working with the princess seam that goes into the armhole, I would treat it like the position of a dart. So I'd have it a little bit off, like not directly on the apex. I'd have it maybe an, you know, an inch from the dart. Um, and towards the, towards the sides. Yeah. yeah towards the sides. The bust yeah. So yeah. it'd be, it'd be sort of on the outside of your, um, bust. Mm -hmm. And I think Similarly, I don't think you need to have, you know, a princess seam going straight across your apex. I think it should be a little over to the side. Uh -huh. um, but I think the reason why people give different measurements in, in terms of how far from the apex, um, depending on the size of your bust, mm -hmm. that seam can be farther away. So if you're, you know, an A cup, B cup, C cup, you could be a little bit closer, mm -hmm. an inch. And then if you're D cup or larger, then you can be almost, you know, an inch and a half or two inches away from mm -hmm. your apex. And how about the princess seam that starts in the, sh in the shoulder seam and comes down similar, or do you go a little closer in for that? I think you'd go a little closer in, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want, you don't want a line straight from your, from your shoulder to your hem to be really offside because then it would look more like a um, panel. Right. So you do want it a little bit closer to the apex. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but as the bus sizes get a little bit larger, I think it could be a little bit farther away. Okay. And yeah. this is going to be a dumb question, but is there ever an occasion where you would cheat it to the inside, say with a shoulder princess seam? Um, I've seen some color block designs. Well, I was just going to say color or, blocking or yeah. if you're mixing a print and a solid, mm -hmm. you know, you, the whole goal of any garment is to be flattering on your bust. So mm -hmm. if, you know, if you need to move that line in to maybe, let's say, minimize or maximize your bust shape, mm -hmm. yes. then I don't think there's a right or wrong. Okay. You know, I think it really, because a princess seam is a style line. It's not a dart. And style mm -hmm. lines can really be wherever you want to put them. Oh, okay. Versus a dart, it's obviously going to be, if it's too high, it, it looks wrong. Um, but a style line can be, you know, you can you have some play with that. Right, and you can still get a good fit no yes. matter where you put it in and relation yes. to the apex. And ultimately, I think it just depends on what's flattering you. Right. Because if, it's with, it's, if you're following the rules and you put it on and it doesn't look right... You know, you should feel you should feel free to move it to where it does look right. Yeah, where it looks and, good and, on you. And yeah. how much does that um, give you trouble with fitting if you wanted to change it? Uh, do you know what I mean? Like if you've gotten it to fit properly and it's sitting outside the bust point area, but you want to bring it in a little closer, for example, do you need to change the curved lines a lot? And how would you go about doing that? Would you mark it on a muslin or would you try to do it on the pattern? If I was, if I knew I was going to be playing with my mm -hmm. princess seam, I would sew that with a extra, you know, maybe an inch seam allowance, uh -huh. and then I would pin it in and move oh, okay. it as I, you know, okay. and try it. Mm -hmm. And that way, I could see what I was doing without having to, you know, oh, well, sew it and then re-sew it and re-sew it. So right. I would have seam allowances that I could, you know, negotiate those changes. Yeah, and then transfer that to the pattern, and yes. you've determined where it goes. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, you can send us a sewing question at threadsqna at taunton.com, and it could be answered on a future episode of Sewing with Threads or in the magazine. Thank you for listening, and thank you, Jennifer, for joining us on this episode. Oh, you're welcome. You can follow Threads on social media and visit threadsmagazine.com to view show notes for this episode. While you're on the site, check out Threads Insider, our online membership with exclusive access to expert sewing techniques. Until next time, keep on sewing with threads.